We are doing a good job in some respects here in terms of approaching our issues as a region. Uh, it's tough to, to try to, to map things out with 101 cities when there aren't really natural boundaries in a lot of cases. So look at my home county, Santa Clara County, there's 15 cities. San Jose covers about 60% of the county, but the other 14 cities are still significant cities. They all have city councils, they all have uh, planning departments, they all have uh, issues that they're trying to deal with on their own. Um, and if you just let that happen, um, sure, it's great, there's local control, but there's literally no coordination without some regional comment on, on what's going on, and, and preferably not just comment, but some direction as well. As you look at regionalism across the country, um, there's, there are regions that probably, frankly, do a little bit better job than us, and there are a lot of regions that uh, cannot match uh, what goes on here in terms of uh, planning integration and so forth. We're really proud of where we're headed now. Uh, I think uh, if you uh, put whatever past uh, history uh, there is, and there's a lot of it over the last 50 years uh, here in terms of, of regional planning and, and look ahead as to what the next 50 years might look like, uh, it's very hopeful. Um, we have uh, the kind of integration now between ABAG uh, and MTC, for example, uh, where the planners are, t are talking to each other every day that, that was something that didn't used to happen. Uh, if you walk around the building that ABAG and MTC share, uh, you'll see posters uh, that say one Bay Area. Uh, that, uh, those posters reflect a summit that occurred uh, for the second time, and only the second time in history, uh, just this past year, uh, where ABAG and MTC convened uh, all of their delegates, all, all of the folks uh, who are involved with regionalism uh, in the Bay Area, uh, and really uh, charted a new course, uh, a course of greater cooperation. So I, I think where we're starting to lead the way um, where we're starting to lead the way is, is in the area of, of cooperation and coordination amongst agencies. Uh, just a few years ago, I was very involved as were a handful of other uh, MTC commissioners and ABAG members in forming something that we call a JPC. Simply put, it stands for Joint Planning Committee. Doesn't sound like much, uh, but it was the first time uh, that we got our air quality agency, ABAG, MTC, in the Bay Conservation District together, uh, convened together on a monthly basis uh, to begin to talk about issues like climate change and what we need to do and how we can mitigate uh, some of the problems that we're facing. I think it's working. In fact, I, I think everybody uh, who's been involved in this process over the last few years sees it working and sees that, in a sense, it's that cooperation that's beginning to catapult us uh, ahead of a lot of other regions in the country. I think both agencies can take a great deal of credit for the, the, the rapid increase in um, affordable housing here in the Bay Area. Now some may say housing still isn't affordable in the Bay Area, but when you look at how we define affordable housing here uh, and the commitments that had to be made uh, at the regional level and then by local officials to start producing thousands and thousands of units of what we call below market housing or, or low income housing, low and moderate income housing. Uh, ABAG and MTC had, had to work very closely on that, and I think it's a great accomplishment. I think it's really understated uh, when, when you look at the numbers, uh, what's been going on here. Um, I, I think that uh, uh, some of the open space uh, conservation that's uh, been going on and, and will go on in the future uh, really becomes, uh, has been and, and will continue to be um, a joint effort that everyone can be proud of. Um, the Bay Trail is probably uh, one of the greatest accomplishments uh, uh, of ABAG over the last uh, five decades uh, and, and we'll continue to work on that but it's already uh, something that you can point to that people use. Um, the pedestrian and bicycle access in those areas is something that comes from the MTC side and, and the funding oftentimes comes from the MTC side so there's really a hand in glove relationship on most of these issues. Uh, people think well if it's housing it must be ABAG uh, but MTC has uh, a, liv a livable communities program that's a huge piece of, of what MTC does. That's all about housing. Uh, if you give it's transportation, it must be uh, an MTC thing. Uh, but ABAG is trying uh, to use all of its uh, planning powers uh, to, to link uh, and connect uh, by pedestrian and bicycle and, and, and other means of access neighborhoods 
uh, retail centers and open space. So they're both involved. There's crossover there, and it's very, very important that we continue to work together, but we can be proud of what we've accomplished uh, over the last five decades. Well, the Bay Trail uh, is one. Um, again, you can, it's, it, there's hardly a place you can go now uh, in, in the region um, without hearing about it or without uh, the opportunity to actually experience it. Uh, I do it myself. Uh, uh, my wife and I take an out-of-town trip uh, somewhere else in the Bay Area, a, a weekend trip, uh, and the first thing uh, we start looking at is uh, uh, where does the Bay, Bay Trail come into this area uh, that we're in, whether it's traveling from Santa Clara County up to Sausalito or, or, or San Francisco County. Uh, uh, that's something that's, that's commonplace. Um, again, I think the, um, the cooperation itself is, is a huge accomplishment. Um, uh, not just between ABAG and MTC, but ABAG has, has convened 101 cities. Um, and let me say what I think is, is notable about that. There only are 101 cities. Um, not only do they convene, they all pay dues into ABAG. Um, they're not forced to do so. And uh, you know, the value that ABAG has, um, you know, has demonstrated over the years uh, as an objective convener of the city and counties, no matter uh, what issues uh, may be under deliberation at any point in time, people see and understand that, that we have to have um, a regional body like ABEG convening um, the cities and counties the way they do. And uh, I'd say if ABEG wasn't, wasn't fair, wasn't objective, um, wasn't value added, uh, you'd see cities opting out, especially in times like this when um, every dime counts. But People continue to, to come to the table, and I think that alone is, is something to be proud of. Okay, that put on your MTC hat. What, uh, what accomplishments, in your perspective, um, are, are, are worth highlighting in the last 40 years? Well, just about every major transportation project that you'd see in the Bay Area over the last 40 years uh, is huge. Uh, I'm sure others will mention uh, what's going on right now with the Bay Bridge is you know, one of the largest public works projects in history, period, uh, not just in the Bay Area. Uh, MTC has done an, an outstanding job uh, managing uh, transportation dollars that come in uh, from the federal government, from the state government, um, you know, it, advising local, what we call uh, congestion management agencies or local operators in the counties uh, as, as to what funds uh, uh, will be directed their way and in, 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 in how they should use those. And the Regional Transportation Plan, again, in and of itself, um, is a convening mechanism that is hugely important. Uh, can you imagine have, having 101 um, agencies, governmental agencies in the county, uh, I'm sorry, in the region, 101 agencies in the region, um, cities and counties, without uh, that kind of guidance uh, the kind of guidance that MTC provides around transportation issues, I think there'd be chaos. Uh, if not chaos, there would be uh, some sort of, of uh, cannibalistic competition as to who gets what, and, and, uh, and that's not the way uh, the Bay Area should operate. That's not in the best interest of Bay Area residents. Bay Area residents um, are not rooting for their, their hometown like it's a football team wanting to dominate all the others. People are rooting for a, a Bay Area that's sustainable, that's livable, that has a high quality of life because we're moving around all the time. Um, a majority of our own public safety workforce in Santa Clara County lives outside the county. Um, there, are, That story probably is the same in, in all the, uh, the urban counties right now and certainly in, in the major cities. San Jose, Oakland, and San Francisco. Um, it, just, it just highlights the point that uh, even your public safety people who are, who are sort of there literally armed uh, to, uh, to take care of that jurisdiction, to protect it, to keep it safe, um, have to have an interest in, in uh, a mutual relationship throughout the Bay Area uh, because even they have to get back and forth to their homes um, uh, you know, to care for their families and so forth. So we, it really is kind of a microcosm of what we're seeing globally here. People uh, are realizing that we have mutual sustainability issues, um, that we're all, literally all in the same boat together here. 
and uh, you know that that's that's what we're continuing with going forward. Okay. Well, I'm very proud of the fact that I was involved in in pulling the four major agencies together with the Joint Policy Committee. There were only uh, seven of us from ABAG at the time uh, sitting down with seven MTC members uh, trying to work out a, a better, more integrated relationship. And there were talks of one extreme and another, and uh, some of that was um, a little bit rough and tumble at times politically because uh, people weren't sure where it was headed. But ultimately, we came up with something that, that's working now, that's creating um, an environment where elected officials from this region who are uh, wearing the hat of MTC or ABAG uh, or the Air District um, sit down together um, and, and air out mutual concerns and, and move forward in direct integrated planning. I think that's most important. The people who are working professionally on a day-to-day -day basis trying to actually do this planning, um, they shouldn't have to read the tea leaves as to what one agency might uh, veto of another agency or, or what somebody may or may not want in the future. So it's very important for us to convene like that. Uh, I'm proud of that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm individually, individually I, I look back on, you know, what I may have accomplished and uh, in, in, in think of that right away as something important. Um, we've done a number of things to try to, to keep people interested. Um, you know, we uh, created um, a new award system, you know, at ABAG to uh, to to make sure that the cities who are putting forward the top um, sustainable projects uh, uh, call it smart growth, but um, uh, we 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 have awards now every year. Those were convened under under my uh, um, term as president, and and those continue now on an annual basis. Uh, the regional housing needs analysis. That's a big long <laughs> phrase. We call it RENA, R-H-N-A. Um, RENA, every few years, um, is a state, a state mandated adoption of a housing plan for the entire Bay Area, which literally assigns numbers of projected housing units that are needed um, in every one of those 101 cities. Uh, talk about <laughs> a challenge trying to convene people um, around common numbers, common purpose, uh, when basically uh, those kind of housing decisions are traditionally and legally um, the sole jurisdiction of the various cities and counties. To get them to come together and say, here's one cohesive plan, um, and we're willing to, to compromise or to endorse or to support um, uh, you know, a set of numbers as to what it's going to take uh, between now and 2025 or in this case this year it'll be 2035 that we're projecting out to um, is a big deal it's a big deal to pull people together and uh, I was I was chairing <laughs> the last one of those meetings with about 30 people around the table uh, for multiple meetings over a series of months and uh, and we got that done um, so there have been some some good accomplishments uh, we've certainly worked closely with MTC uh, from the ABAG perspective on um, filling transit corridors with the kind of housing density that, that's needed um, by adopting policies that will encourage that to happen at the local level. Uh, you may hear folks from time to time talk about something called Resolution 3434, which again sounds like a bureaucratic term, and it probably is, but um, it's another one of those areas where MTC has said, we're going to tie financial dollars to those jurisdictions that um, put a certain number of housing units uh, or project to put a certain number of housing units on transportation lines, on, on rail corridors, and, uh, and ABAG supported that and ABAG endorsed that. And, and it cre again, it creates um, a, a unified purpose so that local uh, jurisdictions hopefully um, follow suit and take the lead. Um, those are all things that, those things I just mentioned that you know, fell, originally fell under my jurisdiction when I was president of ABAG, so I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be able to say that, but I'm, I'm proud of all the people who, who came together at that time to make, make these things happen. Where I think regionalism is, is headed is, um, is, is probably in this direction. Um, we're hearing the word uh, 
um, sustainability now on almost a daily basis, you know, in regional planning meetings. Uh, when I first started here just a decade ago, uh, you didn't. There were a few people talking about it. There were a few people asking the question, uh, how much growth can we actually sustain? What's our capacity? Do we, do we have a limited capacity? Can we just keep adding housing, traffic, uh, whatever, jobs even for that matter? Everybody wants jobs, but is there, is there a finite number at some point that the region can, can handle in terms of quality of life and in terms of environmental considerations, which of course these days are, are even more uh, sensitive than they were 10 years ago. Uh, so I think where the region is headed is, is greater cooperation by necessity to try to, to build a more sustainable uh, Bay Area and, and to make sure that that's done through thoughtful planning and in the same kind of uh, collaboration that got us this far in the first place. What else would you like to add? Well, uh, happy birthday, ABAG and MTC. Uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of people have put an awful lot of, of time over the years um, uh, before my time uh, moving these agencies forward. Uh, their pictures are on the wall around here. Their initiatives um, are, are still things in, in most cases that we're building on. So you have that sense that both of these agencies uh, have a great legacy. Uh, that those of us who are fortunate enough to be involved now in a decision-making capacity are really standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. And it's a good feeling, and it, it's good every once in a while to stop and acknowledge that and celebrate that. Uh, uh, even if the, some of those folks aren't here uh, anymore, it's still good to, to stop and, and acknowledge uh, that none of this would be where it is now without a lot of sacrifice uh, from a lot of people um, who are very dedicated to public service over the last 50 years.